Hi guys, it's Jesse from Hanson Speed Shop. You might be wondering why we're sitting on the floor of my garage behind the Chrysler. Well, today we're going to talk about a pretty simple subject, but it's something that I get a lot of questions on all the time. And that is, what kind of gas do I run in my vintage car or motorcycle or maybe even mini bike or something? And there's a couple things that you want to know prior to diving into this subject and that's what we're going to look at right now. First of all, if your vehicle was made prior to 1974, for the most part, there are a few exceptions to this rule and you might want to do some extra checking if that's the case, but usually prior to 1974, your vehicle is going to require some lead in the fuel. Now, that brings us to our next step. You're gonna to wanna to know if your engine has been rebuilt. If it's been rebuilt in modern times, most likely it's got hardened seats and valves in the heads. And that is what the lead in the fuel is for, is for lubricating those. Now, if your engine was rebuilt in the 80s, in the 70s, or maybe even before that, or if it's stock, there's a good chance that those were not switched over because leaded fuel was still available in those times. And then third, you're gonna wanna know the compression ratio of your engine because that can make a big difference in the octane level that you're gonna need to run in your gas. So that's what you need to know first. Then for a base, when you're putting your fuel in, this is the number one rule that I have. If you take anything away from this video, just remember this, absolutely no ethanol. If your car is set up for it, great, but otherwise no ethanol, especially in a vintage car that you're not driving every day, which most people aren't, it's gonna sit and ethanol attracts moisture and it's gonna corrode up your fuel system and just do a lot of bad stuff. So no ethanol, stay away from that. Then I would highly suggest a premium 91 to 93 octane fuel as your base. Now, if your car has hardened valves and seats, you could just pretty much stop at this point as long as you have less than 11 to 1 compression ratio. You can pretty much get by on standard premium 91 to 93 octane pump gas. If not, if your car requires lead in the fuel, you have three choices. You can get something like this, which is a lead substitute. Mix it into your gas accordingly every time you fill up or top it off or whatever. That's gonna add lead back into the fuel. You do have two more options. If you have a local airport that you can buy fuel at, prop-driven aircraft um, uses an aviation fuel with uh, lead in it. But you're not gonna wanna run straight aviation fuel in a streetcar because it has a high, extremely high lead content and you're gonna gunk up your engine. So I would suggest like getting one gallon, mixing it with 10 gallons of regular pump gas. Um, and you can get by with that. And then usually also aviation feels like 100 or 110 octane. You're not gonna have to worry about any octane booster. Which brings us to octane boost. You can get leaded octane booster, which is killing two birds with one stone. Or if your car requires a higher octane, because of high compression, you can get an octane booster like this. This is race gas. You can mix it in. This makes up to 105 octane. Or you can just get straight race gas, which is very expensive. Um, or like I said, the aviation fuel and just mix it in accordingly if you require lead. Um, what I run in this car, which is a 71 Chrysler with uh, a mostly stock 440, stock compression, 
I run a uh, base premium 91 octane fuel, which is available where I live. Now, depending on the state you live in, um, you might have a variation of what kind of octane you can get, but at least try to get 91 minimum because gas nowadays isn't very good. It goes bad quick. It loses its octane rating quick. It's just not as good a quality as it used to be years ago. So try to use a premium 91 octane for your base. And then what I do on top of that, since my car um, requires lead in the fuel, I add a little bit of this lead substitute every time I put gas in. And then my car doesn't necessarily require an octane boost, but I also add some of this race gas. And I found that just because of the quality of the gas nowadays not being that great, the car just runs a lot better it starts easier and uh it the gas smells a lot better coming out of the exhaust um race gas is probably one of my favorite smells so i like that too um running all this combination of any combination i talked about really is not going to be economical or cheap but when you have a vintage car, you're not really daily driving it, I would assume. Some people do. Um, but, you know, if you got an old car, you probably don't have it to save money on gas. So, that's not really the concern here. But, I hope that um, I maybe answered some questions or maybe confirmed some things or gave you a better understanding of what you might need to do for fuel in your vintage vehicle. So thank you for watching. Stay tuned for more. If you like what we're doing here at Hanson Speed Shop, hit that subscribe button and uh, get out, work on something. Get a little greasy and we'll see you on the next one.